JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 25th. I am Haralamus Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other major currencies on Monday during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained the most versus CAT, NZD and GBP while it lost ground only versus JPY. The strengthening of the yen and the US dollar combined with the weakening of the risk-linked Luni and Kiwi and lately uh, the pound which has been acting as uh, a risk-linked currency suggests that markets may have continued to trade in a risk of fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, European shares kept uh, falling with the sell-off rolling into the opening of the US session. Yes, Wall Street tumbled initially, but all three of its main indices staged a comeback uh, later in the session to finish in positive waters. That said, the selling resumed during the Asian session today with all the indices under our radar falling more than 1.5%. It seems that bets that the Fed could eventually proceed with a faster than previously thought rate path continue to be the main reason behind the tumble in equities. And this could be the case at least until the outcome of tomorrow's uh, Fed decision is publicly known. But if this is the case, why did US indices close in positive territory yesterday? Perhaps some participants found prices attractive and decided to jump back into the action. Geopolitical uh, developments uh, may have intensified the flight to safety. As uh, NATO said, uh, it was putting forces on standby and reinforcing Eastern Europe with uh, more ships and fighter jets in response to Russia's military build-up at Ukraine's borders. US President Biden weighed uh, options for boosting US military in the region as well. So with all that in mind, despite some participants finding equities attractive at such low prices, we stick to our guns that risk, av risk aversion could continue to prevail at least until the Fed makes its, uh, its uh, decision known tomorrow. Following hoggish remarks by several policymakers lately, we do expect a hoggish outcome. However, with such elevated bets over future rate hikes, we see ample room for disappointment. Anything suggesting that uh, policymakers may not proceed as fast as the market currently anticipates could result in a rebound in equities and a pullback in the US uh, dollar and other safe havens. Now, coming back to the FX sphere, the Aussie, despite being a risk-linked currency, was not among the three major losers. It was the fourth one, and the reason why it did not underperform that much may have been Australia's higher-than-expected CPIs released overnight. Remember, yesterday we said that following Australia's better-than-expected jobs data last week, accelerating inflation may allow investors to maintain bets over rate increases by the RBA this year, despite the bank itself holding the view that something like that is unlikely. However, we also said that even if the Aussie strengthens at the time of the release, due to elevated expectations over a faster rate path by the Fed, we didn't expect a long-lasting recovery. It seems that this happened, excuse me, it seems that uh, this has been the case, and up until tomorrow, market participants may sell some more Aussies, especially against uh, safe havens like the Japanese yen. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the European session, the German IFO survey for January is due to be released, while later from the US we have the Conference uh, Board Consumer Confidence Index for, uh, for the same month. With, uh, with regards to the German survey, 
the current condition, the current, excuse me, the current assessment index is expected to have declined to 96.1 from 96.9, while the business expectations one is forecast to have inched up to 93 from 92.6. This is likely to leave the business climate index unchanged at 94 at 94.7. In the U.S., the CB index is anticipated to have slid somewhat to 111.8 from 115.8. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.